All over the world, a voice is heard. Prepare the way, prepare for change. In quiet villages and busy towns, in bustling cities and desert places, a voice is heard, prepare the way, prepare for change. Out on the seas, the fishermen hear it, working the land and the farmer perceives it. The voice is heard, prepare the way, prepare for change. Good morning to you, brothers and sisters. We are here today to hear the message that God has given us. And God is saying something to us as we are preparing, moving our journey towards Christmas, welcoming the King of Kings. And um, I just want to say we want to thank God. Let us pray. We come to praise you, Lord, God of Israel and all the nations. We come to you who set your people free. We come to you who guides us into the way of peace. We come to you as the journey through the advent and prepare to welcome once again the Christ child. May God bless you. Amen. Today, as we light this advent candle, may its flame be a light that shines for us all to see. A sign that Jesus is for all. May we know God's presence and power as we gather in the name of Jesus, who is the light of the world. Amen. I'm going to call my brother Ben to come and read the Bible, the word of God from the book of Luke chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. Our brother Ben is going to come and do the reading. Praise God and great to be here with you again this week. Um, just a quick shout out that if you can uh, subscribe to the, the channel, that sort of helps uh, rank us on Google and helps other people find Johnson's message. Um, give us a thumbs up. That sort of also helps out. And also knock that uh, little bell, which will give you a notification every time we uh, post another video. So that would be great if you could do that. Uh, also, go back and watch some of Johnson's other videos, um, other messages. They're, they're strong teachings and, um, yeah, will help you develop as a Christian. I, I know they help me every, every message he's brought out, so I encourage you to do that. As Johnson mentioned, uh, we'll be reading this week from Luke 3, 1 to 6. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod Tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip Tetrarch of Iturea and Trachontus, and Lysanias Tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Ananias and Caphias, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching and baptizing a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the word of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every, sh every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked road shall become straight, the rough ways smooth, and all the people will see God's salvation. Praise God. Uh, let's get Johnson back. It's going to be a good message by the sound. So, yeah, thank you, Johnson. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Ben, for the reading of the Word of God. Uh, this morning I've decided to share with you on the theme... How shall we prepare for Christmas? How shall we prepare for Christmas? The Advent season is welcomed and worshipped even by those who do not profess religious interests whatsoever. Because it's so saturated with special moments and rituals that we pick up and pay attention to each and every day. Right now, as I was walking, everyone, even those who are not Christians, who, who do not even want to hear about Jesus, they are also preparing for Christmas. They are buying gifts, they are buying decorations, they are doing all sorts of things. Retailers may be there, 
strictly monetary reasons for constantly reminding us that there is only 21 days left until Christmas. But as December passes, all of us find each day somehow counting more. Advent calendar is an anticipation of each new morning. We are more attentive to and mindful of the days of our weeks, the hours of our days, the minutes of our hours, being mindful of each moment of our life, giving meaning to the minutes we inhabit, should be a lifelong practice for Christians. So the Advent season, the season when we celebrate the coming of the Messiah, so amazing. Because if it weren't for John the Baptist, Jesus might have slipped into town unnoticed. Jesus didn't have an advanced team or a security detail to prepare for his arrival. He doesn't have a motorcade. He, he did not have all those things. He didn't even have a public relations firm sent out of press release. Instead, he had John, a traveling preacher, who was chosen by God to announce the good news. And this was John. Dressed in wild animal skins, eating rockers and wild honey. John the Baptist would stand out in any congregation. Yet this was the man God chose to announce the coming of the Messiah. The voice, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord, make his path straight. So during the season of Advent, you and I are preparing our hearts to celebrate Christ's coming. We are buying our gifts, putting out our brightly colored lights, begging special treats for family and friends, inviting friends to come over our places, coming from different places. So the preparation and anticipation are part of the joy of Christmas. But such are preparations adequate? Are they real adequate? Because we bought the gifts, we bought the food in the houses. Is that what is all about Christmas? In light of John's message, there are some other things we need to do if we are truly going to be ready for his coming. It's not only buying gifts, it's not only putting new dressings and other things. It's issue of preparing for his coming, something more important. So preparation for the coming of Christ means, first of all, repentance. That is what we are hearing. Luke tells us that John came preaching a gospel of repentance. Give it a thought. How else would one prepare for the coming of the Son of God? How can we prepare for the Son of God? The Bible tells us that God is holy, holy, holy. When the biblical writers want to add emphasis, they use a repetition. Holy, holy, holy. God is holy, holy, holy. He is a God of righteousness and justice. How else could an unholy God, unholy people such as you and I receive the Lord's own anointed unless we repent? We need to repent. So in literal sense, repentance is changing your mind, turning it back in the right direction. In his baptism of repentance, John the Baptist was offering people the opportunity to align their mind with the mind of God. When now you are, when your mind is aligned with the mind of God, you think the things of God. That is what it is all about, Christmas. In the Old Testament, repent means the radical return to God of those who have broken the covenant with him. Ezekiel 18 verse 21 to 30. So this prophet burst into the scene at the Jordan River, calling the people back to God, this time through repenting, turning from sin, and being baptized. That is what he's calling. So John called for true repentance, nothing less than a complete change of mind, heart, and behavior, the kind of radical change that only can enable. Have you experienced this kind of change in your life? Do you need to repent of anything? Actions, thoughts, attitudes, omissions. Now, this is the time. So when you are preparing for Christmas, your guest is Christ. Who is your guest? It's Christ. It's not your brother. It's not your father. It's not your mother. It's not your uncle, it's not your nephew, it's not your boyfriend, your girlfriend. The guest is Christ. And that is very important to know. So you are preparing for someone who is very important. Who is holy? Holy, holy, holy. 
So you also need to be holy. Because you are preparing for someone who is... So the second step in preparing for the coming of Christ is a commitment to right living. Now you might say that it is redundant. Repentance involves a commitment to righteous living. But that is not what most people think of when they think of repentance. Even when they think of Christmas. They don't think about repentance. In fact, sometimes a lot of sins, or maybe people even commit the worst sins on Christmas. <laughs> because people have the meal they are eating, they are drinking without the honor of the birthday, without the guest. So think, they think in terms of being sorry for a mistake and making of a promise not to make the same mistake again. So they do not understand repentance is a complete change of direction. Repentance is a complete change of direction. You were going this way and we are saying go this way. I've seen when people are playing soccer sometimes, when you find that maybe the defenders are playing backwards and the attackers are coming, people are shouting. They are saying something, turn back. Meaning you are going the wrong side because you are going towards your own goal. So you need to change direction. So a commitment to right living is a commitment to move forward into a new way of life. Not a comfortable way of life. A new way of life. There are parts of your life where old and new can coexist. In your socks drawer, for instance, you can have old and new socks in the same drawer. Some with walls, some with not. But they're in the same drawer. Old and new t-shirts. That's perfectly acceptable. In your living room, you can mix old and new furniture. Interior decorators called eclectic. You... You, 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 you can mix all these things, perfectly acceptable. But in your life, in the core of your being, where you are accountable to God, your creator, old and new attitudes and priorities and beliefs cannot coexist. <laughs> they cannot coexist. That's why God promises numerous times in the Bible that he is doing a new thing that is making all things new. So which means there is a total change. You can't have your past with your present together if you are a Christian. The past needs to go away and the present needs to stay. So and before we can receive Jesus, the Messiah, we need to prepare ourselves for a new life. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 reads, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... If anyone is in Christ, the new creation is come. The old is gone. The new is here. Did you hear that? If anyone is in Christ, the new creation is come. The old is gone. And the new is here. The old is gone. The new is here. Did you want God to do a new thing in your life? This is the time for God to create a new thing in your life and your life will never be the same. Finally, we prepare for the coming of Christ by receiving God's grace. It's just God's grace. It's not of our work. It's nothing. It's God. We are not disciples of John the Baptist as much as we admire him, as much as we try to hear his words. We are disciples of Jesus Christ. He was telling us, we do repent of our sins. We do try to live righteous lives. We are disciples of Jesus Christ. So he's the one calling us. But we know that we do not have the power within ourselves to live as we ought to live. So we throw ourselves on God's mercy. That doesn't sound like a Christmas sentiment, does it? We, we are talking about Christmas. And you are saying, Johnson, why are you talking about repentance? And all these things about commitment. We are talking about Christmas. We just need to eat and drink. That's all. Because guilty people need mess. Broken people need mess. Unworthy people need mess. And that's what we are. You and me, we are in that category. And that's why we need Christ. But with a God who loves us and is willing to meet us right where we are, that's why he sent his son Jesus 
to walk in our shoes, Emmanuel, God with us. We depend upon him, upon his grace to supply us, unworthy as we are, with a righteousness that only he can give. We don't make ourselves righteous. It's the righteousness that comes from Christ by trying to live according to his word. Let me tell you a story that has been told on July 26, 1987, while Reverend Walt Everett was preparing to leave a mission trip with Habitat for Humanity, he got the call that his son Scott had been shot and killed by his neighbor, a drug addict named Mike Carlack. Understandably, Reverend Everett struggled with a horrible anger towards his son's killer. After meeting other parents in a grief support group, however, he realized that his anger was poisoning his life. He prayed that God would help him to forgive his son's killer. One year after his son's murder, Reverend Walt Everett sat down and wrote a letter to Mike Carlack, who was now serving a five-year prison sentence. In the letter, he offered Kalak his forgiveness. Mike Kalak wrote back, and the two men began a regular correspondence. <clears throat> a few months later, Mike Kalak asked if Reverend Wallach would visit him in prison. And by the grace of God, these two men created a friendship on the foundation of heartbreak and forgiveness and faith. So when Mike Kalak's father died while he was in prison, Reverend Everett preached his funeral sermon. When Kala came up for parole, Everett spoke to his parole board. After Kala was released from prison, he and Reverend Everett began traveling to churches and schools and prison to share their story of faith and forgiveness. The two men were even interviewed. At one point, the host asked Mr. Walt Everett if he could ever look at Mike Kala and not think about his son's murderer. Reverend Everett replied, I can never forget what happened to Scott. But when I look at Mike, I don't see the person who harmed Scott. I see somebody who has been changed by God and we celebrate that. I see somebody who has been changed by God and we celebrate that. That's what John the Baptist was sent to announce. That's what he's offering to you and me today. A chance to be changed by God. To accept Jesus as our Messiah and our Savior. So that when God looks at us, he doesn't see our past. He doesn't see, he doesn't see our sins. He only sees someone who has been changed by his grace. And he celebrates that. Isn't that a great message? The message of love. Do you want this Christmas season to be like every other Christmas season? Do you ever look back a few days after Christmas with this vague feeling that you missed something really important? That you expected something special to happen and it just didn't. Maybe the problem is you didn't expect anything from God. You didn't expect anything from God. You didn't prepare for a new life in Christ. It begins with repentance, turning back to God. It requires a commitment to right living. And it means receiving God's grace and mercy. God is just offering it right now during this period to Christmas. Is saying, I'm coming. Now the time for you to decide if you are ready to find a new life in Jesus Christ, the Messiah. He is standing at the door. He says, I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking. If anyone opens the door, I'll come in and dine with the person. That is what he's saying. I, 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 I like what C.S. Lewis once put it like this. Christianity has no message for those who do not realize they are sinners. Isn't that a great message? Christianity has no message for those who do not realize they are sinners. The truth is that we are sinners and God is righteous. If we are going to be prepared for his coming, we better recognize and do something about our sin so that we are meeting a righteous God. How shall we prepare for his coming? How shall we prepare for his coming? The answer is repentance, a commitment to righteousness living. A willingness to receive his grace and love. That's all. May God bless you as you are preparing to receive the King of Kings. God bless you all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you that you are God 
and we are mere beings. Advent God, you prepared your people for your coming. You gave your word to us through prophets and priests, through stories told and retold, through the history of time, through the written word, through the spoken word, but always your word. As Christmas lies being bring, begin to dazzle in our lives, we know that your glory is way beyond their transfixing power. Advent God, we adore you. We bring ourselves before you just as we are. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, uh, I just want to age you. This is Christmas. This is the time you should just show your generosity and say, thank you, Lord, for coming into my life. Thank you, Lord, for giving me this life that I am having as a Christian. This is a different life. A life that is dedicated to God. And they're saying, thank you for that. Now, when you look at it, you say, okay, this is the beginning of the year, which means God has been looking after you for the whole year. And can't you say thank you to God? So, as you are taking your Thanksgiving offering, remember who Christ is in your life. And then you are reminded to offer him something. Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, we come before you with our offerings. Some of us will struggle to make ends meet. But Lord, you still have given us the gift of life. And we still realize how important you are to us. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful opportunity that you've given us. We still thank you that we continue to worship you. And we continue to say, thank you, Lord. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. God bless you from now and evermore till we meet next week. <laughs>